Hi everyone and welcome back to this new short form podcast that I'm doing on this channel. It's called Legit Ideas with Vimo. I am Vimo and these are my ideas and you're listening to them on my YouTube channel youtube.com slash Vimo live and possibly on audio apps like Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Ghana.com etc. If you are doing so, thank you and share the episode with the people you know and you also think might enjoy this. Uh, the point of today's episode is uh, ease of use. We talk a lot about this, and I was listening to something on uh, K- uh, I was listening to something by Casey Newton, who's a tech journalist, and they were talking about the possibility of something like Chat GPT replacing Google. I know I've talked about Chat GPT before. I've talked about AI before. I've talked about AI and the risks that it poses to uh, artists and writers, etc., and to other areas also. But this is about a slightly more meta issue. It is about ease of use. So there is a rumor, and I cannot verify this because I'm not a big shot, but there is a rumor that Microsoft may be working to create a version of its search engine, Bing, uh, that is powered by ChatGPT. And if that happens, then we might have a search engine that works better than Google. We might have a search engine which, instead of uh, giving us a lot of options, will just give us one right answer. Now, I know there is significant amounts of reservations about whether that is even possible. I mean, chat GPT is not perfect. Sometimes it gives you really weird answers. The other day I typed into it, uh, write some hundred words about uh, the future of the BJP in India. And it wrote an essay where... The 2024 election had already been won and the prime minister was Amit Shah. Like completely. And so its ability to process reality is somewhat limited or at least uh, has some limits. But that is beside the point. I'm saying if chat GPT keeps improving and one day it becomes capable of giving us absolutely accurate answers. So imagine now you go to Google you type out a question and you get a number of results and you have to go through them to figure out which one suits your purpose. Chat GPT will be a chat GPT powered search engine will be a page where you go and you ask one question and you get the answer. No going through several links, no going through multiple websites, no uh, diluting, no, no sharpening your search in order to find exactly what you're looking for. You just find the thing that you are looking for. And one of the things that uh, Casey Newton spoke about was that there is some uh, apprehension in the high officials of Google about how this will affect their revenue. Because think about it. We were talking about ease of use, right? How easy something is to use. We assume that easy is always better than hard. And there is there are various problems with it, obviously. Uh, for w- One obvious problem is that Your Facebook friends are not really your friends because it is very easy to be friends with someone on Facebook. All you have to do is click a button and occasionally click a like button. If you post pictures of your wedding on Facebook, many people will click like on it, but not all of them will attend or even care what happens to your life. The people who are your friends will actually attend your wedding and care what happens with your life and stay in touch and ask questions and talk and share their life with you, etc., etc., All of these things are harder than simply clicking a like button. All of these things take effort. So effort is actually a good thing. Uh, If you are going for fitness, effort is a good thing. Sweating is a good thing. Pain is a good thing. Because through that pain, in fact, only through that pain can you get to the place where you want to get. So ease of use is also something that may perhaps collapse the advertising business. Because a lot of money that advertisement based businesses generate is through effort. Like the only reason Google can show you ads is because you have to go through a number of sources in order to arrive at what you need. Right? When you're searching, you search for a sentence, you find a bunch of links, there are ads on its side, you click on a link, there is ad on that page, Uh, you click on another link on that page, there is an ad on that page also. So The only reason the ad business works is because searching for something takes time and effort. You take effort out of the equation and the ad business is gone, right? 
the advisors is gone because you are simply directly arriving at the thing that you need imagine uh, uh, tinder it's an app where you find a date so you open the app there are a number of people available there you swipe left you swipe right eventually you match with someone and you go out on a date and you either like the person or you don't like the person and then your parents ask you about their cast and things go forward <laughs> but the point is it takes effort imagine a tinder where you open the app and the very first thing you see is exactly the right person for you now tinder cannot show you ads because you did not spend any time on the app so a large part of the effectiveness of apps and websites and uh, you know systems like this depends on effort depends on dare i say imperfection if the systems were perfect if the systems were absolutely accurate all the time the ad business will not work the attention economy will not work so the question is does chat gpt and other things like chat gpt by removing the role of effort and time from our engagement uh, from our habits uh, using which we engage with these systems are they making the world better or are they making the world worse they are clearly having a detrimental impact on the advertising business which may even be a good thing because i think a large part of the problem that we have in modern society uh, where uh, uh, really terrible people gain power and influence by adopting the behaviors that are encouraged by the advertising economy they all they do is say random things that will get people's attention and because they keep getting people's attention the algorithms think that they deserve attention and they keep uh, you know pushing their ideas even more and they become influential sometimes even so influential that they become president of the united states so the attention economy has destroyed a lot of things journalism is one of them politics is one of them maybe soon democracy will be one of them but my point is this that the attention economy is still based on people needing to spend time on things and that cause that 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 thing is hurt when something like chat gpt takes effort out of the equation i know a lot of this is based on speculation i know a lot of this is based on things that not, have not yet happened and may very well never happen but my question to you is what do you think about this do you think chat gpt will by destroying everything that we know right now bring about a better tomorrow or will it by destroying everything we know right now bring about a tomorrow that may be even more terrible than the present that i keep complaining about let me know that was today's episode it uh, this is a ideas podcast i just have a thought and i make a podcast episode about it this is just me talking to you the uh, but this podcast is part of a channel called vimo live which is basically a call in show and i go live every wednesday and saturday at 9:30 pm so if you are interested in talking with me you can join me on youtube.com/vimolive and uh, we can talk on wednesdays and saturdays at 9:30 pm if you don't want to you can listen to that show and this show on any audio app of your choice including spotify google podcast apple podcast gana.com jio savan etc so thanks in advance and if you have not subscribed to this channel please do thank you and i will see you in the next episode bye bye